This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website or online store, you can make it with Squarespace. Formula One published some of their in-progress design concepts for the chassis regulation revisions due to come into effect in, hopefully, 2021. Although, immediately that's a little bit of a lie and we all know it. One concept image was leaked from a talk Ross Braun gave in Singapore, and FOM realised they had to produce some sort of press release to stop the wildfire gossip around this one image, spreading misinformation and leading people down the wrong paths. So Formula One's hand was forced, and it's likely these images were never supposed to be shared widely, and may or may not bear any resemblance to the regulations brought into sporting law for 2021. Nevertheless, we can still explore the ideas being played with in these images. The main objectives of revolutionising the era in 2021 is twofold. Now firstly, most importantly, it's to improve racing. Ross Braun hilariously said, We established very early on in our research that the cars are very bad at following each other. Yeah, Ross, that's as obvious as the tail on a peacock. What was your research? Watching F1 in 2004? But anyway, he's right. Once a chasing car gets within a few car lengths of the car in front, it loses about 50% of its downforce, according to their models. And according to Braun, and maybe let's not be as optimistic yet as he is, their research and development has managed to bring this down to just 20% loss of downforce, which is great. The second objective is an aesthetic one. Formula One wants aggressive, exciting looking cars that people drool over and stick on their bedroom walls. Braun insists that the overtaking problem takes precedence over making the cars look awesome, and that this is just a tangential issue that won't override the needs of the racing. We saw how that went in 2017. Now these cars look pretty nice, depending on your tastes, and we'll go into them in a minute. But first, let's make sure we've got our feet planted on planet Earth, and remember the monumental challenge Formula One has here in crafting these regulations. Remember, rules can often breed strange-looking cars indeed, even with the best intentions from the rulemakers. Engineers are single-minded machines. They only care to extract performance from within the rule space. They don't care about aesthetics, or environmentalism, or really even safety at the heart of it. When their design hit is on, they're simply aiming to build the fastest possible car the rules will allow. And this is how loopholes get wrenched open and suddenly we have a load of cars with trunk noses or an outbreak of winglets or a massive bit of scaffolding on an otherwise elegant chassis. Remember, at this stage, no rules have been announced, just these concepts. And the concepts explain the objectives as discussed and some of the ways they aim to achieve them. The rules, or regulations, specifically describe a legal framework, a space in which the teams can design freely and implement their ideas, and you have to create this framework very carefully to get the end result you really want. For example, if we were inventing football, we might think it's enough to say, you can't use your hands, you have to keep the ball inside this painted box, and score points by getting the ball into the other goal. And you might then be surprised when one team turns up with cricket bats to beat the other team with, and the other team turns up covered in glue so the ball sticks to their bodies. At this point, you might need to go and make the rules a bit more specific, and this is how we end up with a regulations framework four million pages long. This kind of thing happened with noses in F1 in 2012. The FAA wanted to lower the nose so they lined up with the side impact structures such that a T-boning wouldn't take someone's head off. So they mandated that past a certain point, the nose could only be so high. Unfortunately, F1 engineers really wanted high noses, so they kept the noses high for as long as they could, and then stepped down to the mandatory height, creating some truly inelegant designs. The rulemakers assumed designers would just create a nice flowing shape, but the designers don't care about that at all. The rules didn't account for their interpretation, they didn't understand what gains the engineers would seek to exploit. Now, hilariously, they made the same mistake again in 2014 when they lowered the noses again, leading to these nightmare beasts that belong under the sea with the water bears. My point is that your concept, your intentions, your, your idealised versions of the rules may be great, but if you don't structure the rules properly, engineers will walk right around them, and the cars that turn up in 2021 may look nothing like these, the most optimistic interpretations possible. That slight diversion out of the way, let's have a look at this concept art. Three concepts were shown to the public, and they represent three stages of evolution in their research and thinking, so let's step through them in order. The first concept is not hugely different from the cars we have today, save for the simplified wing that's due to appear next year. This concept is mainly to demonstrate how they want to evolve the halo design to be more aesthetically integrated into the car. There's no particular word on whether this halo we see here is structurally capable, or whether it's just a, forgive the expression, pipe dream. Clearly the current Halo has a very specific engineering that allows it to be as strong as it is. Hopefully they'll be able to keep this strength in the device as they modify its shape, or perhaps we'll end up with some non-structural aesthetic shaping over the top. This version of the Halo is pretty elegant and aggressive though, complementing the lines of the car as if it's been carved by the air rushing over the chassis. 
The second concept image here has more fundamentally focused on the aesthetics following the 2017 philosophy that cars look faster if you skew them backwards, and they just pump this idea up a notch. However, there are some error ideas here that follow through to the third concept and may likely give clues as to some fundamentals that FOM and the FIA are moving forward with. So firstly we've got this dolphin tail style front wing with the upper elements cascading from the nose instead of being stacked on the lower base elements. Other than being stylistically a choice, this kind of wing design will start to minimise the vortices generated off the tips and edges of the front wing elements. As we saw in previous videos, these vortices contribute massively to the disrupted airflow behind the car that ultimately wrecked the downfloors of the following car. We're also seeing flat sculpted covers for the suspension and what's being called shark fin posts and winglets further back. Both of these devices are right in the heavy airflow through which the engineers purposely send energised air and vortices around the body of the car. Again, this airflow contributes to the mess sent out behind the car, so the idea here looks to be to clear up and homologate this airflow a bit, and or prevent designers from doing anything too wild with it. We can see these ideas taken further in the third concept, where we now have these big vanes positioned right down the car to smooth turbulence and de-energise vortices moving through this area. Now these Concept 3 images are supposedly the most up-to-date culmination of all their R&D work, but seeing as the car has the old F1 logo on it, we can be pretty sure this work is at least a year old. Nevertheless, we can still appreciate the ideas at play. A lot of this side pod area here is currently heavily biased towards looks, not airflow cleanup, with the team seemingly borrowing heavily from other concept style designs like the BMW i series that involves folding layers into each other like a sexy pastry. The front wings now have much larger end plates, which again will do a lot to curb the vortex generation off the element tips. And the rear wing is now lower and wider, both aesthetically aggressive and a solid move towards downforce and balance. However, the concept removes the rear wing end plates from the main plane, which are important for boosting the efficiency of the wing. It also appears the rear wing angle can no longer be adjusted unless the second flap here moves. A fixed rear wing could be interesting for setup, and does this wing allow for DRS? Very little has been said to explain the thought process behind this. It may just be an initial idea from a graphic designer, to be honest, that will be reinterpreted by the technical team to make more sense in a Formula One engineering context. All in all, we need to take these designs with a pinch of salt. They are designed to both excite and inspire with very little information given on the kind of rules these concepts will lead to. It's interesting that there's not been much talk given to shifting aero away from the wings and overbody and more towards the underbody and ground effect an area less susceptible to disruption and dirty air, but who knows what's going on behind the scene. Ross Braun is a talented engineer and he and his team are less likely to be blindsided by engineers exploiting loopholes than the rule makers that came before him. So let's be optimistic that the eventual set of rules will be the first step towards getting the cars racing again. Now you may have a brilliant concept that you want to see brought to life online, which is all the more possible with the help of Squarespace. Did you see that? that seamless segue. If you want to set up an online store or put together a website for your passion project, you'll find it a whole lot easier than Ross Braun and his team as Squarespace has this pretty elegant all-in-one platform. This means you can do everything on site all through their website without having to install any software, which means no patches, no updates or worrying about disk space or any of that. You can just log into Squarespace and put your ideas into pages. No faff. So sign up for a free trial at squarespace.com and once you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash chamberf1 to save 10% off your first purchase and make it with Squarespace.